What's up, Camp Renovate? This is Pastor Joe here. I'm back in the kitchen for one last time because we're going to wrap up our Fruit of the Spirit series right here together. Now, I want to see if you guys have memorized all nine fruits of the Spirit. So if you've got them all memorized, then I want you to put up nine fingers in the air and let me see. Here we go. Ready? One, two, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hang on, let's do this again. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Whoa. Okay, so we've got that. And here we're going to do, we're going to go through them all on the count of three. Are you ready? Here we go. <gasps> Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Somehow I got off. All right, here, let's do that again. Are you ready? Here we go. <clears throat> Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and there it is, self-control. Self-control. Now, so we got that part out of the way. Who can tell me what the very last one is? What was it? What was it? Ah, that's right. It's self-control. Now, we're going to use our recipe book called the Bible here. And in Proverbs 25, verse 28, says this, a man without Self-control is like a city without any walls. Now just imagine back in that day, if you didn't have any walls, there was no boundaries, there was no order. Anyone could come in. It was madness. They would take over your town. They would steal your food. They would kidnap your children. I don't really know if they would do that, but it would be crazy. Now, I want to give you a few examples of what self-control may be like. Maybe your parents told you that they want you to sit down and not move at Oh, I remember being in school and they used to tell me that and I'd have to sit with my hands folded and do nothing. And it was so hard. And I would start shaking like this and then I would move this hand, I would move this hand and then I would just go crazy because I couldn't do it. Or maybe your parents tell you it's time to go to bed and they say, what do they say? They just lay there and close your eyes and don't go to sleep. And I would lay there and I'd close my eyes. And I'd lay there and I'd close my eyes. And I lay there. I couldn't do it. It was so hard. Why? Because self-control is really hard. It's really hard. And as a matter of fact, it had to be even hard for Jesus. I want you to turn your name and go, no. -uh. But I believe that probably was hard for Jesus. Now, I want us to go to a story straight in our recipe book here about Jesus had to overcome a situation where he had to show self-control. And we're going to jump right in to the story that takes place in a garden. Looks like a nice garden, but it was right here in this garden that Jesus was about to do the hardest thing he would ever do. He was about to give up his life as a sacrifice for the sins of the world. He was gonna go to a cross where he would die the most painful death you can imagine. And then three days later, he was gonna rise again and defeat death for you, to open up a door to heaven, to spend eternity with him. Now, even though Jesus knew it was going to be okay, that didn't mean it wasn't scary for him to go to the cross. I mean, if I was Jesus and, and I had to go to the cross, I would be freaking out, but not Jesus. Jesus stayed calm and he trusted his father God, even when those soldiers came with blazing torches and weapons. Now, Jesus knew exactly what it was about to happen and here's what he did. He stepped toward those soldiers and he asked them, who are you looking for? Whoa, Jesus of Nazarene. Now this is one of the coolest things I've ever read in the Bible. Jesus had so much power and so much self-control when all of these soldiers were coming to get him, he didn't fight. All he had to do was say who he was and literally everyone would fall on the ground on their behinds. Whoa. Oh. <gasps> So, one more time, Jesus said to them, who are you looking for? Jesus said once more, don't worry. But this time, the soldiers were so scared of him. All Jesus had to do was to ask, let my friends, the disciples, go. Now, 
what should I think about this? I mean, for a second, if you knew something really, really bad was about to happen to you, you probably would want your friends to stay and protect you, right? No, not Jesus. See, Jesus knew what he had come to this earth to do, and he knew that he had to do it alone. Now that's self-control. Peter, on the other hand, Peter needed some work. Oh, my ear, my ear, you're crazy. Cut off my ear. That is nasty, but that's exactly what happened. Peter was, was so into this moment. He just acted crazy and out of control and he took his sword and he just, whew, he couldn't even see where he was and he ended up slicing off somebody's ear. Now, think about this though. It's confusing. I mean, all of this is going on. Everybody's like, what just happened? Somebody got their ear cut off. And this might be the perfect time for you and your friends, the disciples, to make a quick little getaway. But what would you do? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you would make a quick getaway. Raise up your right hand, nice and high. Yep, mm -hmm. if you'd pick up that nasty ear, would you raise your hand if you pick up that nasty ear on the ground and put it back on the soldier's face? <laughs> it's a pretty interesting choice. Well, let's see what the recipe book says. In Luke 22, 51, it says, and Jesus said no more of this. And he touched the man's ear and he healed it. Oh, 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 it, it's, it's fixed. My ear is better. Oh. See, when everybody else had no self-control, Jesus showed them how powerful he really was by utilizing self-control. So how do you master the fruit of self-control? Well, Camp Renovate, it's not easy. But there's really good news. See, you have to make sure that the other eight fruits of the Spirit are already growing in your life. Here's some examples. If you know how to love when it's hard, then you've got self-control. If you're always joyful, then you have self-control. If you can have peace and patience even when life is crazy, then you have self-control. If you can be kind and good even when other people aren't being kind and good to you, that's self-control. If you can be faithful when you feel like giving up and things are really rough, that's self-control. See, if all the fruits of the Spirit are growing in your life, self-control is already yours. But just like anything in this amazing life God has given to us, you have a choice to taste and see that God is good. So are you going to make that choice? All right, friends, let's go over our bottom line together. Great self-control comes to those who rely on the Lord. See, we can't do it alone. We gain self-control when we rely on the Lord to give us help in everything that we do. We'll see you later, Camp Renovate. Go have some fruit.